Hi guys, welcome back. This is episode number 76, featuring one of the most influential graphical adventure games of all time, Ken and Roberta Williams' King's Quest. You are Sir Graham, the bravest and most honorable knight in the troubled realm of Daventry. King Edward the Benevolent, aged ruler of Daventry, has summoned you to the castle for reasons unknown. Greeting Sir Graham the King is expecting you. Allow me to escort you to His Majesty's throne room. Thank you, Sir Knight. Raise the portcullis! I am at your service, my king. I am an old man, Sir Graham. Perhaps too old to carry the weight of this crown. My bones ache and my hands tremble. I am afraid my time on Earth grows short. But enough about me. Great misfortunes have befallen Daventry since the loss years ago of three magical treasures. I have chosen you, the finest knight in all of Daventry, to search for these lost treasures. Only then can this kingdom be restored to its former glory. And only then may I rest with the knowledge that my people are safe. Ah, King's Quest. One of the most important and influential adventure games of all time. Released in 1984 for the short-lived IBM PC Jr., one of those uh, legendary flops of the home computing <laughs> industry. Um, IBM had a lot of problems with this uh, platform. They, you know, the basic idea was to take their IBM PC line and kind of strip a lot of things out, um, build in audio and uh, nice graphics and joystick ports. Uh, never, you know, it sounds okay, but it had a really crummy keyboard and combat compatibility issues. In short, it was a big flop and didn't sell very well at all. Um, fortunately for Ken and Roberta Williams, uh, they were able to quickly port King's Quest to all the major platforms of the day, and it sold really, really, really well. Opened up a whole new genre, <laughs> and it's still played by many people today. There's lots of remakes, um, official and fan remakes, and of course all the sequels and spinoffs. Uh, this was a really important game. Now, Ken and Roberta Williams are a husband and wife team, and they had been releasing very innovative games well before King's Quest. In 1980, they had developed Mystery House, which was a, a very crude, but nevertheless, the very first adventure game to offer graphics. And as you can see here, these are <laughs> very primitive. Uh, they look to me like something a rather demented child might draw up. <laughs> it's kind of scary stuff. <laughs> um, but, and later on, they released uh, The Wizard and the Princess, which was the first adventure game with color graphics. And you know, a slew of other games, uh, they were pretty well known by the time they got around to King's Quest. Now, in King's Quest, we have a lot of innovations as well. Uh, the most notably, unlike those earlier games, King's Quest is from a third-person perspective. So you, you can actually see the character King Graham, or Graham <laughs> in this game, on the screen. You can move him around left and right, up and down. Now, it's, it's supposed to look like 3D, but it's sort of a faux 3D effect. Because as you can see when I go up and down into the foreground and background, uh, Grand doesn't get smaller or larger, he just stays the same size. But nevertheless, this opened up a lot of uh, possibilities for spatial puzzles uh, that just wouldn't be possible in a text game where you only had textual descriptions. Now, this is a very, it's a, it's a very sophisticated game, and there's a lot to talk about, and I also want to mention the sequels. So without further ado, here is King's Quest. And here we go. Here is Sir Graham in the Kingdom of Daventry. 
ready to embark on an incredible quest, uh, but uh, I seem to have fallen <laughs> into the water. I've only been playing a few seconds, and I have already met my untimely end. Well, at least you get to hear that pleasant little ditty every time you die. I thought it started to lose its appeal for me after about the hundredth time I heard it, but your mileage may vary. Every time I look at these graphics, I, you know, they, we might think these are primitive today, but I just love the, the bright colors and the, the little subtle animations. These alligators kind of remind me of the alligators in Frogger. You know, you'll notice that there's quite a few arcade-like elements, you know, especially when you consider what else was available at the time. Now there at the bottom I have my text parser, and I can try to guess what verbs and words uh, the developers have programmed in here. It's a pretty interesting uh, mix of the text and the graphics. I think it's a huge leap forward from the other games. Of course, it's not always perfect, and you don't, sometimes you can't guess what word you're supposed to use, but... All in all, not bad. Now, it's interesting, in the, in the later Sierra games, including the uh, official remake to this game, they got rid of the parser, and they had uh, some other schemes, usually something involving a, a, uh, a point, a mouse pointer that could change into different things. But a lot of the fans of this original game, they, they really hated it. They prefer the original parser, warts and all. <laughs> I think they're kind of crazy. You know, the usual excuse is that they like the parser better because you have more freedom to, to, and more creativity. But since you're limited by the words that the programmers put in there, I don't really see the advantage of that. I'd uh, much rather just have the, um, the verbs to choose from. Now, if there's one thing you should know about King's Quest and Roberta Williams in general, it's just how much this woman loves her fairy tales. Almost all the games are deeply steeped in myth and folklore, and of course, fairy tales. Now, in this game, uh, what has happened? A king and queen have been childless. They call in a sorcerer to do something about it. Uh, the sorcerer says, sure, but give me that magic mirror that tells the future. Very valuable artifact, but the king gives it to him. Unfortunately, not only does he not help impregnate the queen, but she gets very sick, deathly ill, and they're out of magic mirror. Fortunately, a dwarf shows up and offers to give some medicine to the queen that will cure her, but only in return for a magic shield that makes its wielder invincible. Again, a very valuable artifact, but the king, what's you gonna do? So he gives the dwarf the shield, and instead of curing the queen, the dwarf kills her. Now you think this king would have learned something, a little something about trusting strange people, uh, but nevertheless he finds a beautiful princess, a beautiful damsel. Uh, she seems to love this old man, uh, you know, slightly mysterious perhaps, um, and as you would expect uh, she turns out to be an evil witch. She takes the last artifact, a chest that never empties of gold. Now at this point the king calls in you, Sir Graham, to try to fix the situation. He thinks he's too old to rule anyway, so if you're able to recover these artifacts, he will give you the crown of Daventry, and you will be the king, and hopefully do a much better job than he did. Now a lot of that story would have just passed you by if you didn't have the instruction manual, which really goes to show how important it is to have the manuals that came with these games. Otherwise, you'll miss out on a lot. Plus, they're very well produced and quite collectible. Now here we are a little bit later in the game. I'm showing you the... Woodcutter's Hut, just to give you an idea of some of the variety of locations in this game. It's actually quite a large map. There's a lot of uh, rooms or areas to explore, a lot of uh, finely detailed uh, work there. Uh, not all the items are uh, do anything, of course, but if you know if you've played any adventure games, you should always try to examine everything and take everything that isn't nailed down or wedged, because <laughs> you never know when something like uh, this axe might come in handy. Unfortunately, in this case, it's just uh, for decoration. Now, here I am uh, going inside the woodcutter's hut. This is one of my uh, favorite parts of the game. There's another one with the wish that I'll try to show you. And you can see we've got two hungry people here, and they're desperate. So it should be pretty obvious I have to find some way to feed them, in which case they might let me have that fiddle over there. You probably don't know what the fiddle is for yet, but... Again, it's an adventure game, so you know it's probably going to be very useful later on. 
Now, it just so happens, as I was exploring earlier, I happened upon a magical bowl. And this bowl fills with stew. All you have to do is say the magic word. Now, it's really unfortunate this wasn't a bowl of KFC chicken. But nevertheless, I guess the stew is better than nothing. Now they're really happy, and I can at last get my hands on that fiddle. I guess I know how Jack Benny feels now. All right, so let's have a look at the next game. If you notice there, it was our very own Al Lowe who did the wonderful soundtrack <laughs> to King's Quest II. Now this game picks up uh, where the last one left off. Remember I mentioned that magic mirror that lets you see the future. That's going to play a role here. Now whereas the other king couldn't get his wife pregnant, Graham here can't even get a wife, so we're pretty bad off here. I guess uh, Sierra probably figured this kind of story would relate to their audience a little better. Uh, but fortunately, we can use this mirror and track down a very beautiful woman. Now, the critics were pretty harsh on this game. They uh, claimed uh, one of the things they objected to was the similarities to the first game. Uh, one of the critics called it a pretty much a carbon copy. And as you can tell, there's been no substantial improvements in graphics or anything like that. Um, nevertheless, if you're a serious King's Quest fan, you'll definitely want to play this. Now here we have the last of the King's Quest games I'm going to show you today. This is uh, King's Quest 3 to Air is Human. you got to love the titles they come up with. Now they've been criticized for the second game. Uh, the, the story was too similar to the first. So here they've given us a new character to play. This is Gwydion, who, as it turns out, has been kidnapped by this wizard and forced to do his bidding. So we'll have a you know, quiet adventure trying to get away from him and a lot of rescues and such. But it looks a lot similar to the previous two games. And that's because uh, Sierra was using something called AGI, Adventure Game Interpreter, which was a virtual machine uh, that worked very similar to Infocom's Z machine. Basically what it lets you do was create a game using it and then it could quickly be uh, compiled for all of the different platforms. It seems strange today, but back uh, when games like this were being made, there were uh, lots of uh, rival computing platforms, and they were very different internally. So it had been a huge a huge chore to try to write separate uh, versions or to port them all independently. The downside of that was, though, that all of the games, even on the more advanced platforms like the ST and the Amiga, uh, looked identical to this. <laughs> so uh, I guess it uh, cuts both ways. Now, in 1990, Sierra released a remake of their game uh, with much better graphics, as you can see, and a mouse-driven interface. Uh, the parser's gone, uh, which, again, some people uh, really objected to that and prefer the original. Now, one nice thing about this remake is it's not a one-to-one -one remake. Uh, there's quite a bit of new content, some new ways to solve puzzles, so even if you've beaten the original game, it's worth seeking this one out. I would also advise you to go to agdinteractive.com, that's where you can download some free fan remakes of King Quest 1 and King Quest 2. Really nice work. Definitely worth checking out. That's all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to try King's Quest or you want to track down a copy, then I strongly encourage you to click the links at the bottom of this video or on my channel page. Uh, there's a link there, a special link to goodoldgames.com, GOG.com, and you can buy King's Quest 1 through 3 for a very good price. Plus, um, Good old, since I'm an affiliate of theirs, they will give me a small percentage of the of what you pay. So it's a way to support the show. It's also a way to support our good old games, who, in my opinion, are doing a really uh, good service by uh, clearing all the copyrights to these games and making them available once again to fans like us. I thought I would leave you with a quotation from the third King's Quest manual. I think it's pretty good advice for anybody, anybody that wants to embark on these quests today. Be brave, be resourceful, be true.